In this tutorial, you will learn how to model a throated, also known as globoid, worm drive, in Blender. The modeling of both the worm shaft and matching gear wheel will be covered, as well as testing the worm and wheel for compatibility using Blender's rigid body physics engine. The backbone of the regular cylindrical worm shaft is a cylinder. The worm shaft is produced by moving a trapezoidal tooth profile along a spiral trajectory around the cylinder. The angle between the profile and the axis of the cylinder remains constant. By contrast, the throated worm shaft is based on a torus, or more precisely, the hourglass shape, cut out of the center of the torus. The tooth profile spirals around the hourglass shape while the direction of the tooth tip remains normal to the surface of the hourglass. The throated design significantly increases the contact area between the worm shaft and the teeth of the gear wheel, and therefore greatly improves load capacity and other performance parameters of the worm drive. The worm shaft's surface essentially consists of four ribbons stretched over these four hourglass-shaped spiral curves. Each of these curves can be defined parametrically by a trio of simple mathematical equations. We have developed a free online calculator which automatically generates the parametric equations for the four curves, based on the user-specified dimensions of the worm shaft and wheel. These equations can then be plugged into Blender's XYZ math surface object, as will be demonstrated shortly. This calculator can be found at www.vinted.com slash globoid.html. Conceptually, a worm shaft and matching wheel can be represented by an hourglass shape and tightly coupled circle, as shown here. The dimensions of the hourglass shape can be fully defined by the radius of its narrowest section, denoted by the letter R, angular size of its arc, denoted by the letter beta. The number of teeth that fall within the arc, chosen to be 8 for this example, and a number, called module, which is simply the diameter of the wheel divided by the number of teeth. The following diagram explains the effect of various module values on the tallness of the hourglass shape. We will be using the module of 1 in our example. Let's start modeling. Delete the default cube by pressing X. Press 1 on the numeric pad to go to the front view and 5 to switch to the orthographic mode. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point. In user preferences, under the add-on tab, make sure the add mesh, extra objects is checked. Go to the globoid worm calculator at www.vinted.com slash globoid.html. Enter 1 for module, 60 for beta, 8 for gear teeth within the arc, and 5 for reference radius of worm's waist. Leave the tooth fall off height checkbox unchecked for now. Press the button, calculate equations. According to the calculator. The angle between adjacent teeth of the wheel is going to be 7.5 degrees. Let's remember this number as we will be using it often. In Blender, press Shift A, and go to Mesh, Math Functions, XYZ Math Surface. Since we won't be using the V parameter, let's deal with it first. Enter 0 for V min and V max, and 1 for V step. Also and check the URAP checkbox. Now, copy and paste the three equations from the worm calculator's top group to the corresponding boxes in the XYZ math surface object. U min and U max are always minus 1 and 1, respectively, and the U step value should be copied from the calculator. Add another XYZ math surface object and copy the equations from the worm calculator's second group.
Repeat this step for the third and fourth group. Using the box tool, select all four spirals. Join them together by pressing Ctrl J. Press Tab to enter the edit mode, and click on the Remove Doubles button in the Tools window. Press A to deselect everything. While holding down Shift and Alt keys, right click on the two outer spirals. Then press W and select Bridge Edge Loops. Press A to deselect everything. While holding down Shift and Alt keys, right click on the top outer spiral and the inner spiral next to it. Again, press W and select Bridge Edge Loops. Press A to deselect everything. While holding down Shift and Alt keys, right click on the bottom outer spiral and the inner spiral next to it. Again, press W and select Bridge Edge Loops. Press A to deselect everything. Now select the two spirals on both ends of the remaining gap. While it may be tempting to use bridge edge loops right away, this won't actually work. We must first deselect a full loop of vertices from the top spiral. Press C for circle select, and while holding the shift key, Deselect the row of vertices until the rows of selected vertices on this spiral, and the one right above it, align. Repeat the same procedure on the other end of the model. Now press W and select Bridge Edge Loops to complete the model. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. It's time to start modeling the matching gear wheel. It may seem like a standard involute gear will work with this worm, but actually, it won't. For demonstration purposes only, we are going to import a pre-made outline of an involute gear with slanted teeth. As you can see, the the worm and wheel bodies overlap in space, which would prevent this mechanism from functioning. What's more, the problem gets progressively worse as we move from the center of the worm up or down. Therefore, we need to model the wheel tooth from the two far ends of the worm surface itself. Press N, to open the number panel. Enter 29 for the X coordinate of the 3D cursor. 29 is the distance between the worm and wheel, as shown by the worm calculator. Now the 3D cursor is positioned in the center of our gear wheel. We need to rotate the worm around the 3D cursor so that the center of the top gap of the worm lies on the x-axis. The top gap is 3 teeth up from the center gap. Therefore the rotation angle should be 3 times 7.5, or 22.5. Press Shift D to duplicate the worm, then press R for rotate, then Y, then 22.5. Rotate the other copy of the worm in the opposite direction by pressing R then Y, then negative 22.5. The mouth-like shape that results from these operations is going to form the walls of our tooth. Select both copies of the worm and join them together by pressing Ctrl J. Press Tab to enter the edit mode. Click on the Face Select button. 
press C for circle select and select the inner faces of the mouth shape. Then deselect those faces outside it, that were selected accidentally, if necessary. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection. Manually deselect those faces on the mouth shape that are still selected, if any. Now press X to delete, and choose faces from the menu. Then delete all remaining unwanted faces as well. Press 7 to go to the top view mode. We do not need the entire remaining geometry for our tooth. We are going to keep 8 faces on each side of the X axis, and delete the rest. Select these two rows of vertices, and use bridge edge loops to form the tip of the tooth. Also select the vertices on both sides of the tooth and press F to create faces there. Press A to select everything and press Ctrl N, to fix the normals. Our tooth is essentially ready. However, we need to shrink it a little bit to avoid too tight a fit with the worm. Shrinking by 1% is usually sufficient. Press S for scale then point 99, then enter. To create a second tooth, press Shift D to duplicate, then R for rotate, then Y, then 7.5, then enter. Now select these two rows of vertices and use bridge edge loops to form a bridge between the teeth. The two teeth need to be duplicated and rotated by 7.5 degrees to form a third tooth. The next rotation angle is going to be 15 degrees, then 30, then 60, then 120. Repeat until the entire wheel is complete. Press A to select everything, 
Then press the Remove Doubles button to remove multiple duplicate vertices created by these operations. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Press Ctrl A and select Apply Rotation. Then, in the Tools window, click on the Set Origin button and choose Origin to 3D Cursor. The essential portion of our gear wheel is ready, but you may have noticed that we no longer have the worm. It has been sacrificed to create the teeth of the wheel. This is nothing to shed tears about, since the original worm was not very practical anyway. It lacked the tooth height fall off feature which it needs for smooth operation. Let's go back to our worm calculator. This time, check the tooth height fall off box and click on the calculate equations button again. You may notice that the equations are now quite a bit more complex. Back in Blender, press Shift C to return the 3D cursor back to the origin. Now create the 4XYZ math surface objects and copy the equations from the calculator the same way as before. As before, join the four spirals with Ctrl J, enter the edit mode by pressing Tab, and press the Remove Doubles button. As before, use the bridge edge loops to connect the spirals. Before the last invocation of bridge edge loops, deselect a full loop of vertices on the top and bottom of the worm. You can now see the effect of the tooth height fall off checkbox. At the top and bottom of the shaft, the tooth height falls off gradually until it becomes flush with the hourglass shape. The only thing that is left to do is turn this surface into a solid manifold object. Select the very top and very bottom vertices. Press 7 on the numeric pad to go to the top view. In the Tools window, click on the Spin button. Enter 360 for the angle. The number of steps is the value of U step, as shown in the calculator, which is 1024 in our example, divided by the number of teeth within the arc, which we have chosen to be 8. 1024 divided by 8 is 128. Press A to select everything and click on Remove Doubles. While holding down Shift and Alt keys, 
right click on the newly created circle of vertices, and top section of the spiral. To be able to use the bridge edge loops, we need to deselect these vertices first. Now use bridge edge loops. Press A to deselect everything. The newly created surface needs to be subdivided using the loop cut tool. Press Ctrl R, then add three cuts with the mouse wheel, then left click to confirm, then right click to center. Now we need to manually create four square faces to fill this gap. There is also a tiny triangular gap which needs to be filled as well. The top loop of vertices can now be extruded upwards, and then inwards, to form the top of the worm shaft. The same procedure should now be repeated on the other end of the worm. Press tab to exit the edit mode. Now we need to test our two parts for compatibility. We will be using Blender's rigid body physics engine for that. Add a cylinder and move it up. Call it, axis, 1. Add an empty of the type arrow. Scale it up to see the ends of the arrows. It is going to be used for a hinge constraint on the worm. Call it hinge 1 and move it up. Its Z axis is already correctly oriented along the worm's axis. Add another empty of the type arrow. Scale it up. Rotate it around Y axis by 90 degrees so that its X axis is oriented along the worm's axis. This empty is going to be used for a motor constraint on the worm. Call it Motor 1. Position the 3D cursor at the center of the wheel by entering 29 in the X box of the 3D cursor location. Add a cylinder, rotate it around the x-axis by 90 degrees and call it axis 2. Add an empty, rotate it around the x-axis by 90 degrees so that its z-axis is oriented along the wheel's axis. Call it hinge 2. This empty is going to be used for a hinge constraint on the wheel. Now open the Physics tab in the Properties window. Select the worm. Click on the Rigid Body button. Select Mesh for Shape, and enter 0 for Margin. Select the first cylinder. Click on the rigid body button. Select passive for type. 
Select the empty called hinge 1. Click on the rigid body constraint button. Choose hinge for type. Using the eyedropper tool, select the worm as object 1 and the first cylinder as object 2. Select the wheel. Click on the rigid body button. Select mesh for shape and enter 0 for margin. Select the second cylinder. Click on the rigid body button. Select passive for type. Select the empty called hinge 2. Click on the rigid body constraint button. Choose hinge for type. Using the eyedropper tool, select the wheel as object 1, and the second cylinder as object 2. Finally, select the empty called motor 1. Click on the rigid body constraint button. Choose motor for type. Using the eyedropper tool, select the worm as object 1, and the first cylinder as object 2. Click on the enable button under angular motor. Now everything is ready. Press the play button to begin the simulation. Our worm drive is working. And that concludes our tutorial.